So most of what we're going to talk about today ends up being focused around composting. And really, mortality composting is becoming the new common method, the new normal um, for routine or operational uh, mortality management uh, for the poultry industry. So in this intro slide, we see sort of the typical situation, um, a manure storage structure, some bins off to the side. And this is the sort of scenario we would see, say, in a lot of um, broiler farms and whatnot, that, that type of production. And, you know, a structure like this, bins like that, can manage the routine or operational mortality pretty well. Um, we're also starting to see some rotary or in-vessel uh, composters coming online. Uh, more equipment is being offered and manufactured, though it's not really common yet. And, um, but it is, you know, there is potential there as another <clears throat> on-farm composting method, a routine or operational situation. But what we're going to see in a catastrophic mortality situation is these types of on-farm methods and facilities are going to be quickly overwhelmed. And then um, really the number one goal rises to the top, um, an outbreak or catastrophic situation of biosecurity and pathogen inactivation becoming the number one goal. And we'll get to those details in the following presentation. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what are a few of the other options real quick? Well, burial uh, could be an option. It's fast, it's on site, so it doesn't require transportation, which can be risky, but there are immediate and persistent risks. So first of all, this is not a pathogen inactivation method. Uh, geologic and soil site assessments must be done, but they're not perfect. There can still be issues of um, leaching and um, transport of materials and pathogens. Through, uh, through geology. Depth to groundwater limitations come into play. Many places, um, many sites um, just don't have the depth of soil before you get into a wet season high water table. So that eliminates burial as an option right there. And we know that um, several varieties of av avian influenza can survive in manure, soil, and water for weeks and months. So um, you know, since burial is not a pathogen inactivation method, there can be other nutrient and pathogen issues. Uh, it's just usually not the best option. Landfilling is also fast, but not without its own risks. Once again, it is not a pathogen inactivation method. You have a risk that's brought into the scenario because of transportation. You have additional management practices required for safe transportation and vector control. And then you still have to have access to a facility that's willing to accept, and it's not without um, cost uh, and tonnage or tipping fee. Incineration is a fast method. It does inactivate the pathogens uh, when there's proper combustion and consumption of the carcasses. However, in the context of catastrophic mortality management, you know, we're not talking about the regular on-farm uh, smaller poultry mortality incinerators, these, you know, bigger units that are brought in specially. There can be extensive fuel needs, delicate operations and maintenance, and um, finally another um, con is there can be air quality concerns and um, possible permitting issues, uh, recognizing that they may uh, be suspended, you know, during an outbreak scenario, but still a potential issue. Rendering um, sometimes can be useful, uh, especially if there's on-site limitations for other mortality management options. It is a pathogen inactivation method via the, uh, well, I'm just going to say cooking is sort of a, a simple and crude way to describe it. But these facilities, there's limited availability. They're private businesses that may not want to take on the risk of these mortalities just to recover um, some proteins and other materials. Once again, there's risk in transportation, so it requires special BMPs and vector controls. And like I said, though there are some viable products, um, there's going to be fees likely to bring the material here, and um, these types of businesses just might not want to become involved. So really where this leads us is um, to what we believe was a successful and right decision um, in this year's avian influenza outbreak is, is composting. 
Well, we know the basics of composting. A carcass is buried uh, or mixed into a pile, windrow, et cetera, and a carbon source. And the context of our outbreak, you know, it could have been indoors or out. This image here to the right, we see um, a windrow built inside a barn. Composting converts the carcass uh, and uh, litter, manure, other and the carbon materials into a stable humus-like product. And proper construction uh, is the key for effectiveness of this as a practice. The pros, it is a pathogen inactivation process. Um, we'll see some data in the following presentations about temperatures and whatnot, but the heat generated in the composting process um, when done properly will inactivate the pathogen. Um, and this compost uh, will be safe uh, as a valuable soil amendment. Some of the drawbacks requires more time. Um, we'll discuss this in more detail, but about 28 days just for the composting process takes a lot of space. Um, in this image, we can see a windrow, you know, that is inside a barn. Uh, it could be running the whole length of, of a barn, four or 500 feet. Um, when they're moved outside, uh, you know, we'll see the, see the same sort of size and structure and length. But basically, for a large farm, we would be talking about thousands of feet to maybe even a few miles worth of windrows. And then I just want to reiterate that proper construction, maintenance, and monitoring is fundamental. So a few quick numbers about the outbreak uh, late winter and through spring this year. December to June uh, is when positive um, positives were being detected and birds impacted. And from this map here, um, this is to represent the epicenter, which really was focused on southern Minnesota and northern Iowa. Just to single out Iowa as an example, 35 turkey farms impacted that represented 1.1 million turkeys that had to be depopulated and dealt with. <clears throat> 36 egg laying facilities um, equating to over 31 and a half million uh, laying hens that had to be depopulated and dealt with. Um, low path avian influenza, you know, happens. Um, it, it moves through our industry. Sometimes it's, it's detected and dealt with. Other times, um, you know, it's happening in wild bird populations, maybe into commercial poultry and um, certain strains. Nothing, nothing really happens. But um, this was very significant in the first um, severe and high pathogenic avian influenza incident for the United States. In the states most heavily impacted, state disaster uh, declarations were made. Response to the outbreak was coordinated by USDA APHIS, Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, in conjunction with appropriate state agencies, additional USDA expertise, um, poultry industry, plus land grant and private sector uh, contractors and volunteers. An incident command system was implemented to manage the outbreak, and essentially this is a, <clears throat> a system that's, that's put in place during any sort of uh, disaster that provides for safety and security, it provides a command and response structure, uh, defines roles and the scope of responsibilities for all the actors. And as far as composting, um, they came in down here near the bottom uh, of this flow chart. Um, <clears throat> working with, with some of these other sections as subject matter experts. Um, and the composting SMEs, or subject matter experts, uh, came from USDA, state agencies, um, extension and land grant, like our speakers today, and uh, the private sector as well. So sort of the process was um, after um, a, a positive on an operation, depopulation plan was put into place and, and proceeded. So there had to be youth in, uh, mass, mass euthanasia uh, for the birds. Via approved humane methods um, for floor birds, turkeys, chickens living on a uh, dirt floor with, with litter or and carbon material, uh, foaming was used. So a fire retardant foam was sprayed uh, into the house, and we'll see more detail of that later. 
and uh, the birds passed by fast asphyxiation. Um, for laying hens and um, other housing scenarios, uh, gassing was common um, using uh, crates and carts. Of course, there were plenty of natural mortalities just from the disease alone. And then the primary method of disposal was composting. And then finally, just to give you a little more information, um, after all the birds were taken care of, the composting was done, the facilities were decontaminated, there was environmental testing in another interval before repopulation. And just to give you an example, the last positives were back in June. We still have farms in that Midwest region that have not been repopulated yet. So with that, um, it's my pleasure to speak to you, and I am going to turn it over to Gene. Thank you.